Hello everyone, uh, welcome to ALB, the place to trade. Uh, my name is Shushrut and I'm going to take you through the daily rundown for 8th of August uh, 2019. So before I start, uh, like always, please spare some moment to read uh, the legal disclaimer as uh, investing in financial assets has got inherent risks attached to it. So be careful uh, before trading in the financial market. Uh, <clears throat> so today I'm going to start with the economic calendar that we'll be looking at uh, for Aug uh, for Thursday today. Uh, in the morning, uh, there was some uh, news from China. Uh, the exports uh, and imports came. The export came surprisingly very good uh, at uh, spot three, spot uh, three, spot three percent, uh, and where uh, it was expected around about minus eight, spot three percent. Uh, sorry, minus two percent. Uh, but the imports still were not up to the mark like the exports. Uh, but this really calmed the market a bit. And we did really see kind of uh, uh, a retracement back up from the lows uh, that we have seen in the equity market uh, on, on Tuesday and a bit uh, on Wednesday. Asian shares were trying to piece together a rally on Thursday as Beijing reported surprisingly solid trade numbers while also limiting the fall in its yuan, offering a brief uh, relief from fears of a global currency war. Uh, data showed on Chinese export rose 3.3% in July uh, from a year earlier, where analysts had looked for a fall of 2%. Imports, imports were declined by less than expected, suggesting some uh, resilience to, uh, to the drawn out uh, China and US uh, tariff struggle. Uh, Beijing helped uh, by fixing the yuan at a further uh, at firmer level than many had feared, even though it had uh, it was uh, beyond seven per dollar level for the first time since the global financial crisis. Markets reacted by pairing a little of their recent hefty losses. Uh, the MSCI's broadest index of Asia, Asia Pacific shares outside Japan bounced to spot nine percent. Uh, though it was still down more than 7% over the past two weeks. Uh, Japan's Nikkei aged up spot 5% and away from 7th month low, while Chinese blue chips rose 1 spot 2%. Uh, in the US, the E-mini futures uh, for the S&P 500 formed at a spot 5% and the Euro stocks futures uh, were up a percent. Uh, investors have increasingly come to fear to the trade war as uh, we have uh, seen uh, in the past couple of days. Uh, so, uh, and trade war will prove, and it's kind of proving pr uh, protracted enough to tip the world into a recession. So, uh, uh, pricing in for recession is is at the moment. Uh, in an all-time high. The latest uh, spasm began when central banks uh, in New Zealand, India and Thailand surprised markets on Wednesday with aggressive easing, while the Philippines is expected to cut later on Thursday. So most of the bank, uh, central banks uh, from uh, the Asian and the Australia, Aust uh, New Zealand and Australia region are uh, cutting their interest rates. Uh, we, did, we did see uh, 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 from New Zealand, we saw uh, a news that I was seeing in, in, in the morning. Uh, New Zealand Central Bank could ease rates again, uh, the assistant governor said on Thursday, a day after a bank stunned markets with a steep 50 basis point cut to the official cash rate and flagged the risk of negative rates to fight slowing growth. Uh, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, decision uh, uh, the previous day jolted markets and economists who were expecting a cut of 25 basis, basis points, similar to the one uh, uh, which was delivered in May. Instead, citing compounding inter international risk and sinking interest rates globally, the central bank cut rates to a fresh record low of 1% and Gov Governor Adrian Orr even raised the possibility of using a negative interest rates in the future. The market reaction was swift. The QE dollar 
tumble two percent to spot six six three uh, seven six per dollar on Wednesday. It's lowest since early 2016 and the steepest daily decline in a year. While yields on two-year bonds uh, sank to just spot 81 percent as investors priced it in a prospect of at least one more uh, rate cut. Policymakers everywhere have been forced to consider more stimulus as fears grow over uh, the broadening fallout of the US and China trade dispute on the global economy. Following the New Zealand surprise, India Central Bank cut by slightly bigger than expected at 35 basis point on Wednesday, while the Bank of Thailand uh, is also expected to uh, reduce its key rate uh, uh, on, on Thursday later. Uh, last week, as we know, the Fed cut its rates first time in a decade, while the Reserve Bank of Australia eased in both June and July. So it's kind of a global rate cutting cycle that's been seeing and uh, from the US as well, the market is now pricing in for a minimum of, of a 25, another 25 basis point cut on, on, on September meeting, uh, if not more. Uh, so today, there isn't much news coming from the US, like any major market moving news, but uh, there are some few like uh, on at half two uh, European time in the afternoon, there will be uh, the continu continuing jobless claims. Uh, then there will be the wholesale inventory month on month in June, and uh, followed by the oil uh, gas stock change uh, from, from, the, from uh, US. Uh, not not many not any schedule uh, central bankers that will be speaking today so we have to uh, rely on uh, the technical points of the market to see any kind of uh, major moves uh, if there is also uh, if there is any kind of news that will be developing throughout the day i would suggest you to keep uh, an eye on the major news outlets and also Twitter, uh, which I think is a uh, good place to get the prompt news uh, what's going on throughout the uh, world at the moment. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, we had uh, the oil, mm, oil uh, for yesterday we had the oil inventories uh, that came out from the US uh, and we saw a surprise build up which, which uh, mm, led the market kind of uh, hurled down downwards the price action and it fell the oil prices fell almost uh, four four percent uh, but uh, but oil futures jumps jumped more than a dollar a barrel on Thursday uh, recovering half of the nearly uh, nearly the five percent losses in the previous session on expectation that lower prices may lead to production cuts uh, the Brent crude rebound to 57 spot 75 uh, dollar a barrel uh, which was uh, up a dollar and fifty two cent or two spot seven percent from its last close while the u s uh, wti crude futures jumped a uh, dollar and fifty one cent uh, which is uh, almost two spot nine six percent both contracts hit their lowest level since january on wednesday after a surprise build in u s crude inventories uh, which added to worries that china u s trade war could further dampen uh, the demand growth this year analysts that uh, that crude uh, said that crude prices were uh, moving higher on the expectation that saudi arabia the world's largest uh, oil exporter and other producers of opec uh, may take action to support the market by reducing supply uh, the threshold is 60 dollar barrel and and if you go below uh, that for a significant period of time uh, the market would expect supplies to, to, to be taken off the market in order to support the price up. Uh, on a Bloomberg report on Wednesday, cited a Saudi official saying that uh, the country is in talks with other producers to take action to hold the oil uh, price slide. Uh, also, the trade war rhetoric will continue to guide the markets, but uh, the comments from Saudi uh, could lead uh, to a unprecedented action to stabilize the prices. Uh, which have been in the view of few of many of the uh, analysts uh, in the oil market. Uh, 
the dollar index, which measures the greenback against the six other major currency, has declined a person since July 31st, uh, which was the day before the U.S. escalated its trade dispute with China by vowing to impose more tariffs, setting in motion uh, retail, uh, uh, setting in motion steps that it would put another 10% uh, uh, tariff on the $300 billion uh, dollar worth of Chinese exports. So I'll just put the oil chart at the moment. And so the oil is kind of trading at the moment about 52 spot, 48 uh, dollar a barrel at the moment. Uh, so you can see yesterday after uh, the inventories uh, data came out, uh, the, the sharp drop uh, in oil prices and it touched the, it even broke the support at 51 uh, and 11 cent. And, but for a brief period of time it was there, but it was quick to uh, recover. So it's almost like half of the move have been uh, uh, reversed at the moment have been reversed at the moment, more than half, I would say. So if you're gonna look for a short uh, here, I think it's a good place uh, to short, but I'll come to, to the price points that I'm looking uh, at in a moment uh, after uh, doing the last major news, uh, which was from UK. Uh, Sterling, uh, it's still very undecisive and uh, the news from the UK politics is actually not making it better. I was uh, reading uh, uh, or listening to Sky News today in the morning and there could be a uh, no confidence uh, motion against uh, Boris Johnson, uh, but it's uh, very early to say that because they still need uh, uh, support from the S&P and the Lib Dems and they actually need a quite a vast majority from the to Tory uh, members as well to to uh, go ahead with the no confidence uh, motion against uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson in the UK Parliament. But it, if it were to happen, I would think that would be will be a pound positive. Uh, but at this uh, till now, uh, pound looks still looks to the price action still looks choppy, and uh, I will discuss more about the price points uh, that I've been looking on the pound as I go through uh, with uh, with all other uh, instruments that I'm looking at. Uh, Sterling's recent slide is not yet over as uh, chances Britain and EU part ways without a withdrawal deal have jumped again after uh, uh, Boris Johnson took over as Prime Minister last month. Uh, Johnson, who was the face of Leave campaign ahead of the 2006 referendum and who took office on July 24th, was repeat, repeatedly said that he will take Britain out of the EU on October 31st with, with, uh, with or without a deal. Uh, the GBP fell to a low against the dollar uh, not since the early 2017 at the start of August. Uh, before, the, uh, before the divorce date arrives, the pound will fall further and trade between once 17 and 120, uh, which was uh, done on a Reuters poll of foreign exchange strategies predicted. Uh, below the 121, it was uh, it was below 121 uh, for a slight uh, period uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Britain was originally due to leave the EU at the end of March, but the departure date was extended. The median forecast for disorderly Brexit, whereby, whereby no deal is agreed, jumped in a uh, jumped in from uh, from 2nd uh, of August to 7th uh, up to 35 percent. So uh, between these five days, uh, the chances that Britain will uh, leave the EU without a deal have, have risen quite a lot. Uh, it was before 30 percent and now it's 35 percent uh, which, uh, which, which has been said by the economists. Uh, the highest since Reuters began asking uh, the questions two years ago. So it's, it's the probability is now pretty much high for Britain to leave without a deal from the EU. Uh, but as they have uh, as, as they have since late 2016, when Reuters first started asking about the most likely eventual outcome, a strong majority of economists pull polls still think that the two sides will eventually settle for a free trade deal. 
Again, in the second place was the more extreme opinion of leave without a deal and trade under the WTO rules. Uh, the third most likely outcome was Britain remaining a member of the EU and paying into the EU budget to maintain access to the single market. Uh, yet having said, having no say over policy, uh, fourth place once more went to cancelling Brexit. So the, the four uh, scenarios where uh, the EU, will, EU and Britain would come to an agreement uh, to have a free trade deal and uh, Britain will keep paying uh, to the EU and but they won't have any kind of say on, on, on the on the any kind of uh, uh, trade laws that will be made in the EU uh, which which I don't think at this point of time will be much of a uh, much in the cards uh, after uh, Boris Johnson took took as the Prime Minister uh, the third outcome was kind of uh, they will stay in the EU economic area uh, but which is actually also not uh, uh, kind of looking good at the moment that they will or, or even cancelling the Brexit which is also won't be the case so most probably either EU will uh, sorry the Britain will leave the EU with with a no deal uh, because bear in mind there is not much time left uh, it is almost like less than 90 days left and I am not seeing anything or I didn't see any news that uh, either of them are re really eager to come to a middle point or there will be any scheduled meeting as of yet so it will be uh, uh, it's very very quite uh, dicey for, for the pound from here on. Uh, with the deal expected, the median forecast uh, in the wider pool of over 50 forest, forest market watchers uh, gave a healthier outlook for sterling and it was expected to have rallied to 127 in six months and then trading 10% higher at 133 in a year. But I think this this polls which were done were before uh, Mr. Johnson took the prime minister uh, post and at the moment uh, I, I really don't see this kind of uh, price for GBP between uh, 127 and 133 but uh, you never say no but at this at this point it looks very highly unlikely uh, but if there is kind of any development uh, in, in, in uh, the talks we can uh, see those prices for sure. Uh, other major economies are being supported by central banks easing or about to ease policy but Bank of England is not expected to change its key rate until 2021. So so that is also one of the reason I, I feel that pound will uh, stay at the at this level or maybe lower if uh, Britain has to go out of the EU without a deal. So now let's talk about the prices uh, that I am looking uh, for today. So I have this uh, trend line, the down uh, trend line on on uh, on a four-hour chart. Since there has been like the choppy price action that we have seen throughout uh, the month of August from the starting, and there is no perfect direction. So kind of my trade would be if I had to take a trade in pound, I would be waiting for the price to go up here if there is uh, because since uh, it has uh, fallen from uh, from uh, the mid of the uh, the last week of June or 24th of June, it, we didn't see a proper retracement uh, throughout the price action that has been uh, downward. Uh, so uh, a slight retracement up at 123.50 looks good to go a short but at this current range i won't be really keen on taking any trade maybe if i see a uh, price below 120 which at the moment also very highly unlikely that it will will be seeing that uh, then i will take chance take a chance to take a short here but mostly i think it might just retrace up so if if it goes up here between 123.50 and 124, I think it's 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 a good 
place to short uh, which stops above this trend line that you see which coincide with also this kind of resistance the market have seen before at uh, 125 uh, but yes that would be a trade that I would be looking at but uh, if I see the prices which I doubt that I will see 12350 today but if there is uh, that could be good uh, moving on to euro dollar uh, I was kind of bullish for the past two days on euro dollar but I was holding the position but it didn't really do anything to be honest it was kind of in in moving in uh, 30 40 pip range so and then on the four hour chart I have this trend line upwards and it if I would be looking to short if it breaks uh, this uh, area here this area this area here uh, around about 120 uh, 112 13 uh, or maybe Yes, 112.13 looks if it breaks and also breaks this uh, support level at 111.96, which will give me a double, double confirmation to go for the short. So, actually, I'll be looking for a short today uh, on Euro USD. Uh, from the pivot, looks also good. The 112.35 uh, with targets below. Uh, 111.55. Uh, which kind of looks quite good and but and the stop just above uh, this 124 handle so it's kind of 40 50 40 to 50 pip uh, stop uh, for uh, if you take a shot from there so the short from here looks good but please uh, do remember if you'd have this trend line on your chart as well first let it break proper break you see a break and then go for the trade uh, as you see it's kind of playing at the moment here so if it breaks down here with a proper you see a proper uh, bearish candle i think that would be a good uh, uh, place to go short Moving on to uh, the US Japanese yen, I will be looking for a uh, long position uh, above, uh, above, just above the pivot uh, in uh, US yen with targets uh, at 106.60 and between 107. So, along fr uh, from, so at the moment the price price is above. Uh, 10590 so if you even get a chance to get on the 106 level to go along I would suggest you it looks good and uh, targets being at 107 or uh, between 106 70 and 107 or any any kind of extension if you see maybe this week that we saw uh, on, on on 6th of August day, day before yesterday which are uh, at 107 uh, spot 07 so yes so uh, long from the pivot and target being at the 107 handle looks good on on uh, USD Japanese yen uh, gold I hope you all made if you have taken the trade on gold uh, it was really a good uh, kind of uh, rally that we have seen for the past couple of days on on gold and we might see kind of a bit of retracement so if you're still holding uh, because I was targeting the 1500 which we did see yesterday uh, and I am actually out of the trade but I would be again looking to go long if I see a retracement at the point at this current point it looks like we might see a retracement uh, uh, maybe uh, retracement back to 14 75 80 looks good to go long again so this area here where you see this kind of cluster of uh, prices where it, before uh, taking taking off the price uh, I think 14 74 75 looks good to go long uh, also you have uh, the 50 day moving average at uh, 1484 but I think after such a good rally if i won't be surprised if i see this 30 
35 dollars of retracement which is kind of a healthy retracement and it's a good chance to go long again so if you if the price falls here of course you can go for a long at 1475 76 and or and target uh, the highs from yesterday uh, or or between 1505 and 1500 i think it's 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 a very uh good trade uh, to take and finally on s p i am looking uh to so you can see this downtrend that we are still in on s p uh, but uh, we did see this kind of price move up because uh, both there could be a profit takings plus also the news from china which did help uh, the prices to uh, get back uh, near uh, 2900 but uh, i have this fibonacci retracement uh, which from the highs uh, back uh, back uh, in in july and to the to to the price that it fell uh, on uh, on on monday uh, when the market were really uh, going down and you see this 50 percent retracement here it looks like a good uh, place to short so also it's just above this trend line so if you see the trend line breaking uh, you can actually short here or you can also short here at the moment at 2890 or 92 uh, with the stop just above this 50 day uh, 50 percent uh, retracement i think it, it, it looks fairly a good trade to take at the moment because since there is no news coming at the moment and uh, i i i hope to see the price action at least go to test the lows uh, back from uh, monday uh, which would be kind of because the, if you see the price action it, it just had this uh, retracement here and it fell and now it's going up again so it's kind of a second retracement so you can really short i i would like to short here if the price comes here about two eight uh nine two or nine three but it's also a very tight stop it's not that much it's just if you go a short here and you put your so it's like kind of 10 point stop which in s p nowadays is not much because the market is so volatile so if you are if you can afford to take a 10 point stop on s and I think it's a good trade to uh, do uh, so uh, short round about I think this price here at the moment about 9394 and uh, above 29.4 at stop so it's like a 10 point stop and targeting the first target should be bare minimum uh, this 28 uh, 2834 region here and so it's good 60 points first target and, and the second target uh, being uh, the lows uh, back just here so it's kind of a, like you can get get like about on an average of 70 80 points uh, to a stop loss of 10 points which is like a very very uh, good trade to take on uh, on on snp at the moment all right that will be it from me uh, for the daily rundown uh, I, I I hope I wish you guys all the best for uh, for the rest of the trading day. Uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, and get in touch with us. Uh, here are the numbers that are displayed on the screen. You can also go to our uh, website at www.alb.com, where we'll, you will find all uh, the information about the company and the services we provide. Uh, alternatively there is also the chat option box that will be there that will pop up once you go there you can talk to any of our customer service agents in Spanish uh, Italian and of course English so uh, just get in touch with us if you need anything uh, and uh, please let us know how do you think uh, if you would like to see any changes on our daily briefing again thank you very much for joining us i wish you all the best for the rest of the trading day and have a wonderful day ahead thank you